Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In this video, we have the first part of the construction of this gamma type Stirling engine. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, Upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. I will start by making the displacer cylinder and for this I will use a deodorant can, standard size, and before working with it you need to remove all the contents in order to have as little pressure as possible. We need to cut the upper side of the can, but first be sure to empty the can, otherwise you will make a mess. For that you can use the moto tool or a hacksaw. Ok, now we need to make a cap and for that we need to cut a ring from another can of the same diameter and we'll make the cap with epoxy beauty. We need a flat surface like a glass or acrylic and we will put some oil and also on the inside of the ring. This is to avoid the epoxy from sticking to the surfaces. Let it cure for about an hour before trying to pull it out. Before pulling it out, let's trim the excess material using the belt sander or a file. The speed the oil, it doesn't want to come off easily, so I will simply cut the aluminum ring.
Let's see. It fits perfectly. We need to make a hole in the center for the piston axis. I will use this center finder that I made in a previous video. The link is in the description. Cut a soda can to form the piston. It should have a length of 85 millimeters and a diameter 3 to 4 millimeters less than the cylinder, so it can move freely inside the cylinder. You can glue it with cyanoacrylate or super glue. Make a wooden cap for the piston. And as an axis, I am using a bicycle spoke. You can drill a hole a little bit smaller than the spoke, which is two millimeters, and use the threaded side here. Anyway, we can add some epoxy on both sides for a better grip and mark at a distance of one centimeter at the other side of the piston. Here it is, I glued the cap with epoxy and when doing this you must check that the piston is aligned with the shaft so it doesn't not wobble when you rotate it. And now we must fill the inside of the piston with steel wool. This is not absolutely necessary. If you don't have the steel wool, you can simply put another wooden cap in this end. For the cap of the cylinder, I made a hole slightly larger than the diameter of the axis. This is 2 mm and I used a drill bit of 2.2 mm. So it can move easily, but there is not enough space for the pressure to escape, the pressure that is built inside the cylinder. So this is assembled in this way and I will seal here with epoxy. Here it is. I also made a small hole for the hose that goes to the power cylinder. The last step to complete the displacer cylinder is to put heat radiators in the upper part. You can do this taking the base of a soda can and cutting like this. 
This can be done with the help of your motor tool. Then push to the inside until you get something like this and you will insert this from below of your can and move it to the upper side. We will need two radiators like this. The hose is fixed with high temperature silicon and we still need to insert the second heat radiator. The other end of the hose goes to the power cylinder. The cylinder is made out of a glass test tube and the piston is made of epoxy. I have a video on how I made this piston cylinder arrangement. If you didn't see it, I have a link in the description of this video. In the base we have a hole, this is also made of epoxy putty. And here we insert the hose that comes from the displacer cylinder. Every Stirling engine needs a flywheel. This is homemade and the details of the construction will be shown on a separate video. Ok, we now have all the elements of the engine. The displacer piston, power piston and the flywheel. And now we have to assemble everything on a wooden base. This will be the subject of the next video.